Hey everyone, I've been gone for about the last week or so, mainly because of COVID. I had a pretty severe case and I was out for probably about three or four days with really uh, severe symptoms, pretty much like I couldn't get out of bed. And now I'm past the seven day point and it's pretty much doled down into basically just cold symptoms. So I'm feeling good enough to start recording again. Thank you to all of you that have been patient as there hasn't been any content on the channel and I believe over a week. Today we're gonna be covering the Emperor, um, a hero that at first glance does seem pretty janky, doesn't seem that competitive, but this is a list that I've had a lot of success with on at least testing on Talishar and it's pretty close to about like a 50% win rate, which is a lot more than what I expected from the deck. So there may be room to improve on this um, version. We're just gonna be jumping into it today. So of course the Emperor is the new young hero from Dynasty. So this is a blitz only deck tech. You cannot play this deck in Classic Constructed. It is a Royal Draconic Warrior Wizard hero, which is a lot of keywords. Now he does have a very significant downside in that he can only have red cards in the deck, but his ability is pretty strong in that you can pay three, search your deck for a Command and Conquer, attack with it, and then shuffle. Ban and Conquer is a really good card, obviously in Blitz. This is gonna be a very strong effect going second as you don't have a restriction on your hand size. It doesn't require you to take damage to have three cards available to pitch. And assuming your opponent arsenal is on their turn one, this immediately pressures the arsenal from your opponent. So this is a pretty good effect. But what's more interesting, in my opinion, is the fact that you have access to both the wizard equipment suite and the warrior equipment suite. And the warrior equipment suite is normally known for lots of blocking potential, whereas the wizard equipment suite, specifically Storm Striders, lets you deal damage at instant speed, essentially. This also means that you get to mix the card pools, which is also fascinating because, much like Runeblade mixing physical attack with arcane damage, you can now mix physical attacks with arcane spells. Going into the rest of the equipment that we're going to be using most of the time, we're going to be using Flamescale Furnace, a Draconic equipment, because of course we also have access to the Draconic card pool. And we also are going to be running Crown of Providence just because it's a really strong effect. I think you could also maybe run Skullcap and have a lot of success with that. The main thing we're trying to do is make up for the fact that the Emperor starts with 15 health. And you're able to supplement that by running lots of high blocking equipment. And speaking of equipment, we're going to go into what the end game can be in this deck. Specifically, once your opponent gets slow enough, you are able to Storm Striders out any of your five damage arcane spells. So this would be things like Baltic Bolt or Small Tidings, even also Emeritus Scolding. Emeritus Scolding does six damage when it's played during your opponent's turn, which you would be doing. And then finally, if you are running Waning Moon, you're able to, at that point, use the last card in your hand, assuming you arsenal one of these spells. And you're able to pitch your last card to Flamescale Furnace, get three resources, which then lets you Waning Moon. So with Emeritus Scolding, you're going to be dealing nine damage. With any of the other red arcane spells, you're going to be dealing eight damage. Now, in order to get your opponent low enough to kill them with this instant speed spell using Storm Striders, you do actually get to run a lot of aggressive cards. Because once again, we are in the Draconic card pool as well, so we also have access to like Blaze Headlong, but you do get Plunder Run, Ravenous Rabble, which will always come in for four since all the cards in your deck are red. Run Scar for a Scar since you're normally going to be at lower life totals. And even something like Enlightened Strike is a really strong red card that you can run. So I've noticed that what you normally want to do is have a very aggressive turn, drop your opponent really low. They're dead at, let's just say like five life, five to six life, which is really easy to, to get if your opponent is also trying to keep cards to kill you in a 20 health format, right? But if they do run Arcane Barrier, it means that you're, the majority of your deck, which is going to be attacking cards are now much stronger and you do run on hits like plunder run you do run command and conquer snatch things like that so you're able to race down your opponent really low and then finish them off with storm striders now to make up for the lack of health in the emperor you obviously have access to the warrior equipment suite which is really strong you have access to flame scale furnace which is also very strong crown of providence or skull cap and that way you're able to make up about what is about eight to nine life which you would normally be missing without the equipment suite so unfortunately this is a very legendary center deck if you don't have access to these equipments i don't think this deck can be competitive at all i think with those equipments the deck is like barely like probably tier two but other ways you can make up for the life total deficit are running very strong red defensive cards so specifically sigil of solace Wait for scene and sync below. And then finally jumping into the overall list. So just going through it, we can see we're also running a lot of these zero for three arcane spells. So like Aether Dart. We do have the one cost spells like Aether Quickening, Blessing of Aether, which can be a pretty good setup card, especially if you're going uh, first on turn one. Leave the charts, let you play an attack card and then still be able to do other things. So normally involving um, multiple arcane damage spells in one turn. Zap is another zero for three arcane spell. And then as you see, we have a lot of these zero cost aggressive cards. So like Ravenous Rabble, Scar First, Scar, and Lightning Strike, Snatch. You have some defensive cards in here as well, like Sink Below, Sigil of Solace. And then we have our finisher cards like Swell Tidings, Voltic Bolt, um, Emeritus Scolding. 
So it's just like a mix of different types of damage, trying to get your opponent very low with these very aggressive cards, keeping your life total high with your equipment and your good defensive cards, and finishing them off with Storm Striders. The sideboard plan still needs a little bit of work. I'm just mostly throwing Arcane Barrier in here, uh, Brave Forge Bracers if you need more life total, and Waning Moon, depending on what kind of matchup you're going into, if you think that you're going to have access to that larger final turn. I also do like it sometimes on turn one, since normally people don't always bring uh, complete Arcane Barrier packages, so you can normally push damage with it. So thank you for watching. Uh, I have a lot of other videos on the way, so stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching.